So John, what's the maximum latency that we can tolerate in a vSAN stretch cluster? So the maximum supported latency um, is five milliseconds round trip time. Um, and so why, why is it five? Why isn't it higher? Um, so first off, vSAN is a synchronous. And what that means is we wait on the right acknowledgement. So the virtual machine before it processes and accepts a write as atomic, it's going to wait on the acknowledgement coming back from the storage. And we, we punch that through all the way. It doesn't sit in memory or anything volatile. It goes all the way to a drive. So because of that, if you had latency between the clusters that was uh, larger, you would get write latency that was significant, you know, would get over five milliseconds. And if you start queuing deep and you're waiting on multiple in flight, that could actually get pretty ugly potentially. Um, and while yes, it will technically work, uh, nothing stops you from physically configuring a, uh, a vSAN cluster that stretches from New York to Tokyo, um, your users will notice and will get put pitchforks and come hunting for you. And there will be nice vSAN alerts that say, hey, this is not supported, please stop doing this. Now also in this vein, I'd also, you know, a similar question sometimes comes up is, well, I've got this, you know, I want to run a stretch cluster, but all I have is a hundred meg connection, uh, but I'm going to run it through a WAN accelerator or something like that. No, we, we really want to see 10 gig at a minimum. And you got to think of it as that, that bandwidth between the sites um, that needs to be there. So that, cause one, that's going to limit your maximum right through, but, but also if you ever have a large resynchronization from a site failure or something like that, you're going to be waiting on that straw and no one wants to try to drink, you know, a gallon of hot chocolate through a straw, through a coffee straw. And that's what that's going to end up feeling like. Um, also from this, please don't put any latency adding devices um, into the path. And so we do not support uh, putting firewalls, IDS systems, load balancers in the VSAN. You, you, you wouldn't do that with Fiber Channel. You wouldn't do that with NFS. You don't do that with iSCSI. You don't do it with vSAN either. Hmm. So treat storage traffic very differently than what it would be the fronting VM traffic that your uh, users are consuming, right? Yeah, no, I mean, if it's SharePoint or Exchange, by all means, add all those things into it. Those systems are designed for that. Uh, but no, storage is, it's, it is much more, yeah, it's very different in the expectations. And you really, you also want to have that low latency and simple IO path, frankly, just because if you ever have to troubleshoot it, you don't want to discover that, oh, there's, there's 12 devices between here and there. Um, so, you know, part of it is don't say, well, I can get that latency sometime. No, you need to be able to have consistently you know, sub five milliseconds. And, and as the crow flies, that's going to be something like 50 kilometers or something, because it's a function of speed of light, which uh, is about 30% slower in said glass. So um, unless you're, you know, running your vSAN cluster using lasers on the moon or something, that's going to be kind of that, that cutoff of where the speed of light limits you.